or I am a dancer, it made me a better martial artist. It made me a be able to understand my body a little more. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. You are listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 646, with today's guest, Jordan Kahn. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here for the show. I founded Whistlekick because I love traditional martial arts, and, well, I wanted to make it my job. I have the best job in the world. I get to talk to martial artists and call it work, but it's not the only thing that we do over here. We do a lot more than this podcast. And if you want to see the other things that we do, like the books and the training programs and the apparel, and just all of it. Go to whistlekick.com. Now, there is a store. Yep, we do have to pay bills. One of the things that we do to pay bills is we sell some stuff. And if you use the code PODCAST15 in the store, it's going to get you 15% off, helps support the show, and, uh, well, some cool stuff. Check it out. Now, also to check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's the home for this show. We break it out because there's so much going on with the show. We put out transcripts of episodes. We give you the photos and the videos and the links for each and every episode to give you more depth on, well, all, all the stuff related. So go check that out. Sign up for the newsletter. Stay up on everything that we've got going on. Now, why do we do all this? Well, the goal of the show is to connect and educate and entertain traditional martial artists of the world. Because, well, my personal philosophy is that the average person is a better person with some martial arts training. So let's help facilitate that. Martial arts journeys come in all shapes and sizes because our personal journeys are different. But there are similarities. And one of the things I love about hearing different people's journeys, you know, when we bring them on the show, is that they're relatable. I'm able to relate to every martial artist we've ever had. And I suspect that you too can find some point where you can say, yeah, you know, I see what some of myself in there. And today's guest is no different. Jordan's journey isn't the same as anyone else's, but it's also got a lot in common. We talk about his travels, uh, some of his tribulations, and where it looks like martial arts and life is really finally taking him after a lot of work. So let's talk. Jordan Kahn, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Yo, yo, thanks for having me. Wow, hey. wow. <laughs> thanks for being here. I appreciate it. You know, audience, most of the time, I get a few minutes of chat with the guests before we start recording. You know, once in a while, we just kind of, from the moment they jump on, I just, I just take them and, and run. And sometimes, you know, it's five, 10 minutes. We're into the show before they even realize we're into the show. But today we had a, we had a, Jordan and I had a few minutes of chat, you know, just make sure everything is running right on the tech side. And I got a feeling this is, this is going to be good. I think it's going to be different in the best yeah. possible way. So it's just, you know, it's just a, just a, a voice in my head. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about you today. The next hour ish is all about you. Uh -huh. And in uh -huh. order for us to talk about you, one of the things we just talked about audience was stories. And, and if you're a longtime listener to this show, you know that I love stories that the whole hallmark of this show is stories. If you go to the website, what's the tagline? What's your story? We tell martial arts stories and martial arts stories. Any story needs a beginning. So Jordan, what's your beginning? Man, you know, I'm an, I'm an 80s baby raised in the 90s. <laughs> and around those times, you know, we had these four mutant individuals <laughs> that had a, 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 a greenish skin tone. I think they went by the names of Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, and did I say Michelangelo already? You did. Okay, who's the last one? They're they going to kill me for this. <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo. There you go. There you go. I was going to give you about another beat before I jumped in. I helped you out. You know why I left Leonardo? Because everybody, when we were kids, everybody wanted to be Leonardo. It's I true. Be they did. I, I wanted to be the others didn't get the, get the same love. No, nah, but, but Mike, Mike did. Michelangelo got mad love. Raphael got love. I feel like Donatello was last on the totem pole because mm -hmm. he was kind of a smart guy. But I don't know, dude. Like, I love Donatello. I wanted to be Donatello, which is the reason why. I also picked up a bow staff. We'll talk about that later. But that was literally my introduction to martial arts. Cartoon characters, aside from Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, you know, these are the these are the guys that I was watching coming up. I actually didn't 
find out to uh, about Bruce Lee till maybe a little later on into my teenage really? years. Wow. But these were the guys that introduced me to the martial arts, American Ninja, Delta Force 2. You know, yeah. these, these things right here was like, no, what is this that they're doing? I've got to learn it. Uh, sidekicks, uh, three ninjas, you know, the, the classics, that, 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 that era of, 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 of martial arts saturation, you know, kind of after the 70s, 80s move, you know? It was a golden era to be a kid mm-hmm. who wanted to practice, quote unquote, practice what they saw on TV in the living room. Yep. We had no shortage. No shortage at all. Okay. So you're, you're where, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Queens, New York. It's uh, South Side, Jamaica, Queens, Queens, New York. Yeah. Um, I started, I only had like maybe eight years out there. And uh, then from there, I moved, my parents moved down to the South, you know, to try to get out of, get, get more of a slow tempo or, you know, it was kind of rough area I was, I was in, mm. you know, I remember the neighbors were involved in some big old uh, drug circuit and they were running. Queens in the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were running major weight. And, you know, looking back, I did not know it, but the mother she ran a sewing business, but the sewing business was a cover up, and they would use the boxes and everything for the clothes and stuff like that to smuggle the, 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 the stuff in. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess it went something went wrong one night. They d- drove by, da, 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 lit up the house, everything. Um, for, fortunately for me, I was asleep. But my parents, they they woke up and they saw they actually saw this, and my mom saw that she was like, "Oh no, this is it. We got to go." I mean, you know. I don't know if my kids are going to be able to go to high school and survive right here. So she went down south for like, I think, a, a month or so. It was like, OK, this is where we're going to station ourselves. So I was pretty much born in New York, but raised pretty much in, in Hampton, Virginia. OK. All right. And so based on the timeline, you know, you would have you would have started watching these shows in New York, mm-hmm. kept watching while you were down there. Kept watching. And, you know. Parents pay attention, most of them, to to what kids are doing. So I would imagine that your, at least your mother saw you doing what you were doing. Were you jumping off coffee tables? I was jumping off coffee tables. Jumping off coffee tables, jumping off trees, <laughs> beating up pillows. Oh, beating up a little beating brother. Up <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't have I didn't have the brother to beat up. I was beating up trees. <laughs> what did she have to th- have to say about all this? Jordan, stop. Jordan, <laughs> sit down. Jordan, go outside. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was weird because I was begging. I was begging for martial arts. I was like, begging for martial arts classes. And they never, they never did it. Like, they mm. never did it. And so I had Did to, she say why? I mean, they never knew why. I, I think it was more probably like maybe a financial issue. Sure. And I, you know, I didn't really understand it at that, at that age. But, you know, I, I, I said, forget it. You know, I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to go in the backyard and try these kicks try these acrobatics and things like that. But eventually she came in and she got me on Taekwondo lessons. So I started taking, taking Taekwondo and unfortunately I hated it. I absolutely How old hated it. I was probably like, I would say probably like nine or eight, okay. somewhere nine, probably nine, 10 or somewhere around there. And um, I, when I looking back, I wanted to, I wanted to do what I saw in the movies. You know, we, 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 you know, everything was fast paced, a lot of kicks, a lot of jumps, explosions and things like that. And you, you thinking, OK, if I take these classes, I'm going to do exactly what I'm saying. You, these guys are doing the moves. And it was the complete opposite. I didn't like forms. I didn't like katas. I didn't like the speed. And so now as a kid, I got bored. I got bored. I, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Like, this is not what I thought it would be. Um, but I, I, I continue to train. I continue to train. And, you know, as I got became an adult, that's when I went back and actually took structured classes because I was more disciplined and more able to sit through, you know, and take these 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 techniques and, and take take my time and learn this craft. It, it's such an interesting thing. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so many martial arts schools take the adult curriculum and just teach it the same way to kids. And mm-hmm. it doesn't work. <laughs> kids are there for different reasons. You wanted... Yeah. You wanted to be a superhero. Yeah. Thank you. Kids want to be a superhero. And, and, you know, we've got 
bunch of school owners and instructors that listen to this show. And some of them are nodding along right now. And they're like, yeah, when I realized I had to teach kids in a different way than I teach adults, it completely changed our kids program. Or we probably have some others listening who say, you know what? I don't want to change my curriculum. And that's why I don't teach kids. Hmm. Which is super facts. Yeah. So you make it for a little while. It's mm-hmm. not for you. You pull back. How old were you when you when you went back? You said you were an adult. How, how big of a gap do we have in there to unpack? As far as let's 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 say technically technical training. I went back to technical training, man, probably in my mid twenties. Okay, so we've got fifteen years in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I took and a, you didn't. It doesn't sound like you lost the interest. No way, no way, Jose. So how did you how did you scratch that itch? This is what I did. So. Aside from the martial arts, I was also very into gymnastics and dance. Um, and I actually pursued a dance career for 20 something odd years. I actually moved out to Los Angeles to become a hip hop dancer. And I had some, I had, I had a lot of success in that. I did a lot of commercials, danced for a few artists and things like that. But in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come to LA and become a dancer. And then on the side, I'm also gonna become, I'm gonna get into stunts. And I'm going to train him more into martial arts. And, you know, out here in L.A., they, it's 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 it caters to that. You know, we got sure. we, we got dance studios everywhere. We got martial arts studios everywhere. We got gymnasiums over there everywhere. We got some of the best martial artists and stuntmen and yeah. around yeah. here. You can get these these classes. You can rub Absolutely. shoulders with people and, and things like that. And it just motivates you or motivates a guy like me to really go harder at this. So I occupy a lot of my time with with hip hop dancing. And I can we go a- back? Can we go back on the dance? Yeah, yeah. For a second, I want to go back. When did you start dancing? Okay, so I started dancing around the time. Technically, I would say, um, I'm gonna say a lot, probably like eleven or twelve. Okay. So not, not too long after I stopped uh, taking the martial arts class. Okay. Was that there, there's an important thing that I, I want to discover here? So I'm going to ask some maybe weird questions. Okay. Age 11, you know, adolescence, Mm -hmm. as kids, especially as males, we're really trying to bond with our peers. Mm -hmm. Young girls seem to be a little more willing to go their own way versus boys at that age. Was there a culture of dance in your school? You know, it really wasn't. It really wasn't. It was, uh, it was, it was so rare that I actually had to like, at that time, the internet was just kind of starting up, so I had to kind of like really research to see what these where other people were out there that were like me. But I was, you know, I was just influenced by you know some of the artists that I was also watching. And I was, you know, I was big on was if it was it was either music, entertainment, or martial arts. Okay. And you know, I just dove into that. And I was a Lone Ranger for a long time. You know, I did a lot of talent shows, and and I was doing these things by myself. But the okay, so about, you you started you started dancing solo the same way you started martial arts solo. That's correct. That's okay, correct. all right. Because I I what what struck me was the the idea that dance would have gone differently for you than martial arts, but w- because dance is generally presented in a similar way to martial arts, you know, you're not starting off day one choreographing some super cool routine. Just right. as day one martial arts, you know, you're not jumping through fiery explosions to defeat 46 bad guys in the finale of a film. Right. So what was it about dance that you leaned into that versus martial arts? In any sense? I don't know. I just think I just think it was a part of my destiny. I think it was supposed okay. to happen. Um, you know, I really fell in love with it, man. At that, you know, it was, at that time, it was it was martial arts, dance, and acrobatics. So I was able to take the, my dance and acrobatics and incorporate some of it with my with my martial arts, as far as incorporating the ability to do choreography and things like that, and then be able to translate that back into martial martial arts choreography. And I think because I was a dancer, or I am a dancer, it made me a better martial artist. It made me a, be able to understand my body a little more. And how to move it in certain ways, and also help me improve with my my technique when it comes to my punches, straight lines, and and things like that. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, there, there's 
there's a lot of synergy between dance and martial arts, you know, understanding the body in space. You yeah. talked about lines, straights, angles, etc. And there's there's really something to be said when we've when we've had guests on the show who have a a secondary, primary or secondary background, an additional background in dance or in your case, acrobatics, gymnastics. Mm -hmm. There's a different quality to their martial artists, their martial arts. They are capable of different things. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean better, but quite often, I think they're able to pull from a broader understanding of what their body can do doesn't have to be stunt work. It doesn't have to be gymnastic -y competition style forms. But anybody who's trained, usually a kid, but a martial artist who spent some time as a dancer knows that martial artist can do some things usually sooner than most of their peers. All right. So you move out to LA, you see some success as a dancer, you're, you're doing some work. I'm going to guess you're enjoying it. But from what you said earlier, you never shook the desire to bring martial arts back in, maybe even make it the, the forefront of what you were doing. How, how did you get from where you were to there? What were your next step? That's a better question. But more so, I, I, I always had martial arts in, in, the, in, in the background. Like I, I had two primary goals. My goal was I was going to, like I said, I was going to come to L.A., I was going to become a, a professional dancer and then eventually I was going to break into action films and, you know, take my martial arts to the forefront as I was able to do with my dance. And eventually that, that time did come. You know, it was a time where I, I was dancing for so long, traveling all over the world, doing auditions. And I kind of got to a point where I was like, okay, uh, I'm done. You know, I did it. I did, I've been doing this since I was 16 and it was just like, I've done everything I wanted to do. You know, of course it was a couple of things that, uh, that I necessarily didn't hit, but that's okay. I was still at a point where I was content. So it was like, okay, how can I take my martial arts into the next direction? Ironically, I found this gym. A lot of guys trained there too. It was, uh, what is the name of this gym? I forgot the name of the gym, but shout out to okay. Matthew Saeed. He runs the entire gym. And he actually, uh, I was just looking for some some gig work and he he brought me in to teach uh, gymnastics. or what That's what he called it. But mm -hmm. I kind of, I called it uh, tricking, you know what I mean? Because at that time I was, I was introduced to tricking maybe not even that long ago, maybe like 10 years ago, I saw it for the first time and I was just mesmerized because it was like martial arts meets gymnastics. Yeah. And it was just, wow, wow I got to pick this up. I got to add this to my work repertoire. So I added that to my repertoire as a dancer. But uh, yeah, so I, 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 I got back into a gym and I was tr teaching martial arts tricking and while I was teaching, after my classes of teaching martial arts tricking, I would turn Master Saeed and, um, what was it? He taught, was it Hapkido? I, I don't know, I forgot which form it was, but he taught, he taught martial arts basically. Mm -hmm. And I trained with him and he also gave me access to the gym. It was boxers in there and, and Muay Thai fighters. And I'm seeing all this, I'm rubbing shoulders with these guys. And so we're doing sessions. So I'm getting back into my groove and I humbly say this, but I realized, okay, I've never lost. And I just kept building on it. So I trained mm. for like maybe two, two years just straight in that gym every other day, just training, 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 getting my kicks back, getting everything back. And then when I wasn't in there, I was outside and in the fields, you know, working on my acrobatics, keeping my acrobatics strong and, and going. Uh, have you heard of jam? No. Yeah, it's a big gym. It's a popular gym in, in um, Reseda, California. Okay. Everybody goes there. Every stunt guy goes through there. Every big martial artist, they have so many sessions there. It's a really popular gym. Uh, gym. You should look it up on YouTube. But I would, you know, go there and train as well. And, and you know, this, this, then it was like, okay, it's time. It's time to make a transition into this, this direction and take this martial arts uh, as, as far as I can, kind of like what I did with my dance career. Okay. And so... You're there for a couple of years. You're around all of these people. Did that create some opportunities for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say yes. You know, I got like I said, I got to meet some people. They actually shot a movie at the gym I was training at, so I got featured in that. I'm not, I'm in this movie called Street. That was like one of my, I wouldn't say my first, but definitely one of my um, a martial arts based film that I was able to be featured in, and that was cool. Um, 
And then, you know, it just, it was just mainly just, you know, uh, just, just like, you know, just getting in opportunities where I can meet people. Like I trained with, um, with I remember Don Dragon, Don the Dragon Wilson. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Met, met him. His, his son was actually my roommate for a little while. Oh, and cool. We, we, uh, we, 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 you know, we got it together. We talked about working on a film together. It never happened, but we did talk about it and things like that. And I got to meet Cynthia Rothrock. Um, who else was out there? I forgot my guy's name. So there are a lot of people out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, they would come in the gyms. Uh, our actors would come in the gym, and you know, it was it was cool. It was very it was a very cool time, you know. And I didn't really appreciate it at that time because at that time I was also going through a transition, and you know, my finances weren't exactly where I wanted them to be, and things like that. But it was uh, looking back, it was a, it was a, it was a cool time. For me. You know, a lot of times we don't appreciate things until we look back, like, oh man, like mm. that was actually okay. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Sure, sure. You know? You know, a lot of stories have have a moment mm-hmm. where there's a, let's say, external factors mm-hmm. suggesting that you stop, you quit, you give up, you go do something else. But the good story is there's a voice in your head or or something else saying don't. Was what you just mentioned about transition, was that one of those? Transition, you said? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned yeah. finances. You know, a lot of people yeah. go out to LA looking to, you know, pursue their dream. And, you know, three years later, they're still busting tables and they, you know, yeah. and they tap out. It's, it's the truth. It's, and, and I went through it. <laughs> I, I definitely <laughs> went through it, man. I, I, I remember that I got there the first, I didn't see anything probably for the first two years. And I actually went out there, got an agent. And I'm thinking, oh yes, I made it. I'm I'm good, bro. I'm in there. And it was probably two another year after that until I actually started getting work. This is as a dancer. And then after yeah. maybe five, six, seven years later on, you know, something happened in my life. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Saturn Returns. I don't know how true mm-hmm. it is. But my friend mm-hmm. showed it to me. I was reading up on it. And they say Saturn Return oh, generally happens around 29. Yeah, are you familiar with it? I am. Yeah, and it was just like certain things in your life will just you wake up. You want to change your, your direction, your career, your life. You might get out of a relationship. It was just listen to all these things, and I was like, oh, I kind of was going through that, and I wanted to make a whole complete shift. And but that shift was what it, it wasn't the most smoothest shift, you know, because um, I started focusing more towards the martial arts, and I started getting more into film and to acting, so I could use my martial arts. And um, I, so the dancing gigs kind of, they kind of just pulled away from me. It, was, it wasn't like something I consciously kind of did. It was just my life to say, like, okay, I'm going to have to make some type of change in you. It's going to be a little painful, you know, yeah. but this, this is what growing pain is all about. And I, you know, I went through a very, very dark phase and I, I everything, I lost almost everything. My, my car, my, my apartment, uh, you know, some of my friends. And, and I actually was, had to leave. Uh, California for a little while, and that's when I went out to Atlanta. And mm. I was like, okay, I'm gonna reach. I'm gonna redefine myself. I'm gonna reinvent myself. I'm gonna come out as a martial artist, actor, and filmmaker. I just, I had just spent two years um, in film school, so I took the, all that and I said, okay, I'm gonna be, like I said, I'm gonna become a film producer, martial artist, and actor. I'm gonna take all that. I'm gonna redefine myself. And um, after after a year or two out in Atlanta, you know, kind of reshaping everything, I wrote my first movie, which is Street Dreams Los Angeles, and we actually that's actually streaming out right now on multiple platforms. Where I play this this cop who's kind of grew up in the hood, and he has dreams of becoming this big time FBI agent. He's go through all these obstacles and everything just to make it. And uh, we actually got the film distributed, so like I said, it's on a couple platforms right now. And this is, it's been a steadily growth. You know, it's always hills and, 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 and mountains and valleys that we have to overcome to, to get what we think we want to be or where we ultimately feel in our heart is our destiny to become or, or, to, or where to be, you know? Mm, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a peek at the movie right now. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to guess because it would, be too, it would be too perfect and would connect all the various aspects of, of your life far too well that... Um, you didn't get Nas to to contribute Street Dreams to the soundtrack. <laughs> you know what's funny? Nas, uh, that song was kind of yeah. kind of inspired the title. Did it really? Yes, I heard. I was in Atlanta, 
driving in my car and I had a Street Dreams having a car. Oh, what a, oh, I remember this song. And I was just kind of bumping. I was like, well, that's what I'm going to name the movie. It's a great, it's a great song. And he's from Queens. I mean, yeah, he's from Queens. That's my dude, man. I love some non crazy wow. man. What was it like putting that movie together? Because you're well, not the first person who says, you know what? I'm not making a go of it in other people's films. Screw it. I'm going to make my own. And that's exactly what what's part of our motivation, man. You know, like it's, those roles weren't particularly out there that I wanted, you know, to re- to represent me at, for as a martial artist and a, or action actor. Um, so you know, I reached out to my one of my cousins, and you know, he said, "Hey, man, I believe in you. I've been watching you for a long time. I, I know you're hardworking. You're gonna get it. So I'm gonna invest in you." And he, you know, he it wasn't a huge investment, but it was enough just to get things started. And, uh, you know, I, I have a business partner that I work with. Aaron, shout out to Aaron Patrick uh, we, of our production company, k Film Productions. And we went through hell and high water to get that movie made. Um, it, it initially started off kind of rough, but then we kind of got a, 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 a grasp of things. And then once we got to production, man, the first day was cool. After the first day, it just started get, going downhill, downhill. We worked so many hours on that. And trying to get things to coordinate right, and then, like I said, since the budget was so strange, stringent, it just made made the workload harder. But we eventually got through it. After that, we went into post production. We sat in post production for a year, mm-hmm. and it, it got because of finances. Finances ran out of money. Yeah. But I remember me and my buddy calling every production company we knew, like, "Hey, man, we got this film, we got this trailer. Hey, you think you can give us a hundred thousand, fifty thousand, twenty thousand, you know, <laughs> to help us get it out of here?" So it's, it's set in post production for a minute. Then I had personal things going on in my life. I actually had to go back home to my mom and dad, and that that really hit me in the hit me in the gut. My mm-hmm. ego was took a major hit because here I am. I left to go to Hollywood, California, to pursue some big dreams. It, it started working, and then it stopped working, and now I'm back in my parents' home at my age. It's like it took a it took it took a real hit, hit to my my self esteem and ego, mm. but you know I, I stayed in there. I kept going. We worked on the film. I kept calling back to L.A. trying to get work. Eventually got got work back out here. Came back out here, um, and my life just after that just it, I I broke through, so to speak. You know I broke through it, 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 it financially and things like that. I wasn't in a position where I had to keep struggling and sleeping on couches and sleeping in people's you know. Uh, 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 you know, floors and things like yeah. that get by. And I was also able to finish the movie. So we got through that. Uh, we found distribution that, you know, that was a, 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 a hustle in itself. We was able to pay our actors and most of the people on the crew and the film is out there. And now um, we got it. We got a, a sequel picked up and um, we're going to do nice. it much bigger. So it was like, it makes me kind of feel like, okay, the, maybe the work, was was all worth it. it wasn't all in vain so you know we're just going to see how this all unfolds but making that movie was uh it took a piece of my soul man I can't <laughs> lie. it took a piece of my soul and good uh, art does yeah it does it good does. art does that's why i think some of the best artists of, of any genre mm-hmm. pass soon mm-hmm. i think they the best ones run out mm-hmm. their soul their souls tapped yeah you're right. That man, looking back, that, you know, now that you say that, that makes a lot of sense. But why you think, know, why any any uh, genre, think about anything, anybody, you know, oh, they died before their time. Well, look at what they left. Wow. They took a whole career and they boiled it off into three years, five years, ten years. Wow. What I what I'm hearing, the the common thread through all of this is that you do your own thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if rebel is the right word, but Independent, independent is probably the right word yeah that, is that fair if i if i sat down and talked well, to your I mean, mom it's cool it's just i never saw it like that i mean i just don't want to seem like oh he's at hollywood and all that you know like because that's definitely not the case but um I, yeah i guess uh, independent rebel i don't know i i mean rebel sounds cool but i, <laughs> <independent>. but I <laughs> you know I'm, I'm gonna guess i'm gonna guess you know if we took a look if, if i sat down with your agent and we unpacked the 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 span of of what you did prior to this movie mm-hmm. that sh- he she would tell me you know what there were some things that i asked jordan to do that he didn't do <laughs> roles that he didn't want to take some gigs that he wasn't am, am i right I, I don't know man i guess i kind of okay. I, I don't know i guess i kind of did play the, i did play the game you know okay 
you know, when they when the agents like hit me, hey, I need you to be here. I need this on video. Like I did it. Like okay. my I, like I said, I'm not trying to be bragging, but my 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 work ethic is is top notch. Like I got it from my mom and dad, and and like if this is what I had to do to play to to get this role, not necessarily doing all these things that compromise my integrity and values, but you know things that I had to do to get the role. As far as okay, I need you to make this video. I need you to do this. I need you to be at this this location here at this time. I need you to talk to this talk to this casting director. You know, I, I did it. What's the takeaway then? If you were to if you were to go back, you know, you go back to eighteen year old Jordan. You know, you sit down, have a cup of coffee, and say, <laughs> "Look, look, younger me. Here's what I need you to do, so you can you can get there sooner than I did." Like, what advice would you be giving yourself? Eighteen. I would have told myself at eighteen, uh, leave now because I didn't leave. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't take. I didn't leave uh, my location, Virginia. Till I was about 25. I would, okay. first of all, I would have told him to leave. I would have told him to be patient for one. Um, what else? I mean, that's the only thing I could think of because it's, I feel like, I mean, I maybe I, may, I feel like I did everything I was meant to do. You know, I felt like I was on time. I was at the right place at the right time. Um, it's just a question of time. It's yeah. just grinding it out. And the longer you're grinding out, the more likely you're going to, you're going to, something's going to hit. Is that, yeah. is that fair? I don't okay. think, I don't think, honestly, I'm thinking like, is there, is, can I told myself, Hey, I want you to go meet this person. But I've probably done that. Yeah. Probably certain people. I want you to, you know, get, shake this person's hand or, you know, to respect this person or follow up with this person a little more, maybe things like that. But, um, or be more, be more outgoing. At that time, I was really shy. Maybe be a little more outgoing, things like that. But I, I don't know. I really didn't. I, I don't know if I, if I went back, I don't know if there's anything I could do. Probably just tell them, hey, play this lottery number. This will at least get you. Through. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good <laughs> one. I, I've asked this question a bunch of times. Nobody's gone the lottery route. I like that. <laughs> Let, let's talk. Let's talk about the film because mm-hmm. we've had very, you know, we've had a few people who've who've been involved in in film and TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not a ton of people who've created, mm-hmm. you know, that, that it was their vision. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming because of who you are, there are some fight scenes in this film. Oh, yeah. What was it like the first time, not that you saw it on set, but the first time you saw that fight scene, a fight scene from your film on film? Um, For that film, it was really cool. You know, I because I. Uh, I had to edit the fight as well. Um, oh, like we were okay. on a strict budget, so I had, I had to edit everything. So I, you know, I saw it develop. The more so, only thing I kind of wish I did have was um, cinematographers who understood fight scenes mm. a bit more. Like I, I work with I what I had turned. I work. I work. I felt like I did pretty good with with, with what I had. Sure, but um, I felt pretty good. You know, I mean, who doesn't like to see the, themselves? You know their hard work, you know, kind of turned out the way they, they envisioned it to come out on the screen and thing like that. And I felt like I had, I had two, two fight scenes in that film that I actually enjoyed and, I, and I'm actually somewhat proud of. Uh, one of them, I feel like I could have been a little more wider. I should have had my cinematographer a little wider so I could have seen a little more what my legs and kicks were doing. But oh, you, you're in the film as well. Yes, sir. Oh, man. You're, you're, like, you're like the one-man band of cinema. <laughs> you know, it's, it's... You wrote it. it you directed it. Co-directed, you co-directed, edited, co- okay, co-directed, co-directed. edited, mm-hmm. starred, or at least acted in. Mm-hmm. Were, you, were you were you were you like best boy and, and chief grip no. as well? No, no, man, no. I do wear <laughs> I do wear a lot of hats, man. But I guess like, it's, I can relate. It's not because like oh I want to be that guy. It's not. It's not because it, it's a lot of times because of my situation. Any indie filmmaker will tell you that they have to wear multiple hats because it's just. We're not Hollywood. We're not giving two hundred million dollars to make a movie where we can spread this out and sit back and have have such and such and do this and have such and such and do that. We're working to that point, but I think any honestly, any indie filmmaker will tell you, yeah, man, I wore like five hats for that. I had to produce this, I had to write this, I had to help the best boy. I even had to stop and hold the bloom up for certain scenes and things like that. <laughs> Did it's, you do the choreography? I, I had to help. Well, I had a choreographer for okay. one scene. Um, one of the other scene, me and the, the main antagonist, we actually came up with the choreography together. Um, that's one of my dreams is to really have a, a, a tight knit 
fight choreographer with me on my scenes because it's like I I I I can only be so creative. You know, if I have sure. like another great mind coming in, like, hey, maybe if you try this right hook here, put this a uh, uh, high block here, and then do this toss here, you know, things like that. Like it will really amplify the um, the production value because it's only so much you've been doing your own. It's only because like okay, I'm in this moment, I'm in this scene, I have to focus on the fight for you. I have to focus on the emotion. But I need you to focus on that lighting. I need you to focus on that camera. I need you to make sure that that I, these, 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 this 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 move is looking good is actually selling on camera. These hits and, and things are actually selling on camera. Mm. Mm-hmm. Since you've worked on this mm-hmm. and and see what it's like on the other side, you know, you, you went to school. You know, I'm yeah. not not suggesting this was your first experience with this. Has it changed the way you look at fights on screen? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I think Talk it's, about it, that. I think just being in the industry in general has changed the way I even look at film and TV altogether. Like, I, it's no more the smoke and mirrors, and the way you see it as a regular viewer. That's gone because I, I die partially because I dissect everything when I watch a film. I can't just watch it like a regular person. But um, yeah, of course, you know we, you know, as you see fight scenes and things like that, you kind of see how it's done. And you even get inspired. Like I, I, I love how nowadays the guys are, you know, they're they're they're, they're playing with the camera more. You know, um, they're putting the camera in places that they no- normally didn't do back in the day, or the, how they're tracking tracking uh, certain movements to really sell it. It's a it's a fight choreographer. Um, the first unit director's name is Christopher Christopher Cohen. If you get a chance, you should look up some of his work. He's he's upcoming uh, first second I think first unit director fight choreographer. And I think he's gonna really redefine uh how how fight scenes are shot yeah i think okay. i think he recently just done work on um shang chi um but it's mm. just it's, it's it's game changing you know and um it's just more so it's a lot of it's inspiring it's very inspiring and, and these guys on social media you can go on like instagram and and youtube and you just see how these indie guys are just are shooting these fight scenes it's just like whoa what hollywood needs to take notes what's going on these guys are sh- shooting this stuff better than hollywood is yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's really something to be said for, mm-hmm. you know, you, you talked about it as the, cine, the cinematographer, mm-hmm. the more the people involved in the process mm-hmm. understand martial arts mm-hmm. and what the scene is going for, mm-hmm. the, the better it gets. Right. Because we've all, even, even in top level, th- those of us who've been training for a while and, you know, we, we enjoy fight scenes we've all watched a movie or a TV show and seen a fight scene and thought, but, but what just happened with that hand off screen, right? <laughs> These little bits and you're, and you're, you're watching and the camera's tracking the action, but mm-hmm. you as a martial artist, you're looking at it, you're going, I wanted a wider angle. I want to see what's going on here. Yeah. They look like they're off balance there. Right. And yeah, there's a lot that you can do in editing to make something look better to the layman. Mm-hmm. But if that person holding the camera also trained mm-hmm. and the person doing the choreography understood what the the training protocol for the actor looked like, mm-hmm. right? Like you get a better result. And I think that that's why you end up with these stunt teams. Yeah. That they're working together intensely mm-hmm. for long periods of time. So they know, you know, it's, it's more of a, um, uh, um, a controlled environment yeah. that they can work with. That's facts. That is facts. Okay. So the sequel, mm-hmm. what are you, what are you going to do different? Well, the sequel, we uh, we we partnered up. We have a new partner, um, um, Deval, uh, of your script produce. He has a he has a actually, uh, he has a he does like an annual uh, screenplay contest. And he basically looks for up and coming screenwriters and things like that. But he's getting involved. And we're we're adding on to the cast. We're going to shoot this film in Miami. Um, it's just going to be, it's, we got a, a lot of big prospects for, I am returning back as my character. Uh, this time he's, he's more on, um, he's seeking more so, uh, a vengeance for mm. an incident that occurred to him, uh, to someone close to him. In the first film he had, um, uh, he, be, he was inspired by, uh, a mentor, so to speak, who inspired him to want to get out the street life and become a, a, a federal agent, so to speak. And something happens to this, 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 his mentor and something, and, uh, and he goes out to avenge this, his mentor's, uh, 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 situation. 
And it's also tied into, uh, we have incorporate things as such as drug trafficking and sex trafficking. And it's a, it's a pretty cool story that ties together, that's going to tie together mm. into the first one. And we're going to have some bigger cameos. So that's, that's nice. the biggest thing. So we're, this one, I think, I'm not even going to say think. This one I know will definitely break into the mainstream. Oh, that's great. I'm excited for you. Yeah. The, that plot, some aspects of that plot sound very uh, old school kung fu flick. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You disrespect yeah. it. You killed my master. Now you must die. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, definitely has some elements of that, you know. I love it. Yes, sir. Back back in the early days of this show, uh, before I was a a, a better interviewer, <laughs> I, I were I leaned really hard on the questions, the ones that we sent over to you. Those are our fallbacks. I don't I don't refer back to them very often, but I think it's really appropriate to ask you some of your influences on film now. You know, like you you mentioned a choreographer that you you think really highly of. What about fight scenes? Like That's scenes fair. itself. You know, we we've heard from various people in the industry over the years. And they've told us about some of their favorite fight scenes, yes. you know, and they're not always ones that you expect. Honestly, one that comes up time and again, the sword fight in the Princess Bride mm. is held up as one of the, the best performed fight scenes, at least among folks who have been on our show. Mm. Are there fight scenes that you really look at and respect and say, you know, I, I aspire to produce something of that quality? Man, where do I start? Okay. <laughs> Tony Ja, I really like a lot of his. This one scene he did in, uh, I think it was Umba, where he broke he broke everyone's bones. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you remember that one. He was like, yeah. it was like a hundred dudes in all all black. He was just fighting them one at a time, breaking everybody's limbs. I love that that fight scene. Um, I like the fight scene. Um, it was Ninja with Scott Atkins and Tim Mann. Mm. Uh, I think their their last fight scene. I thought that was incredible. It was just so clean. It was just so clean. I love the way it was shot. Oh, man. Uh, you ever seen Chocolate? No. I um, forgot her name. She's like kind of like the Tony Jaws female protege. I think she was also trained by Panara, uh, Riddick Rob. I'm, I probably pronounced his name incorrectly. But in Chocolate, she did some incredible fights. She kind of, she's like, she has like a, um, I think she has like a, uh, some sort of uh, disability in the film. And she has to fight this this kid. He has, I think he has uh, autism, but he's like his moves when he's fighting. He incorporates the autism into his moves. It almost looks like a drunken style mixed with with b boy, and it's okay. so sick. So if you get a chance, check that out. Black Mass was one of my, is one of my all time favorites, man. I love that film. Um, it's a fight scene in there. He did in the graveyard with with uh, I don't know the actor's name in there. Um, Jet Li also in, uh, yeah. I think it was Fist of Legend. It was the mm -hmm. one uh, he did with, I don't know, no, I don't think it was Fist of Legend. It was one of the, he, he had a son. I forgot the name of it, but he had a son in the film and they did, they did a fight scene at the end and they had, you know, Jet Li tends to use the, uh, the rope. Uh, uh, I, I don't know the name of that weapon, but it's basically a lot of rope technique and stuff like that. And he did mm -hmm. a corporation with his son. But I, man, I just have too many, man. <laughs> it's so many. Well, then, then you're in the right industry. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. If, let, let's, let's imagine we reconvene in, mm -hmm. you know, five, six years, 10 years, you know, and you've been, you've been killing it and you mm -hmm. get the opportunity to put together a film, your dream film and forget about plot budget can be whatever it is, put all that stuff aside. You get to pick five martial arts actors for your film and they're all gonna they're gonna say yes it's just so much money that nobody would say no who are you picking right. let's go tony ja yeah uh wesley snipes yeah uh i'm gonna get michael Jai white okay i'm gonna get um scott of course yeah. um one more one more one more one more i'm gonna i'm gonna get a female Okay. I want to say Cynthia Rothrock, but I just, I don't know how she moves now. I don't know how she, I haven't seen her lately, how she moves. No disrespect to her. I love her, her content. Um, but there's a young lady coming up. Her name is uh, uh, Cena, Cena McKenna. You know, she, I've seen her in a couple of fight scenes. She is so sick. I would probably pick her. That sounds like a good film, man. I would, yeah. I would, <laughs> I would definitely go see that. I would, I would put down my money. 
I would put my money down on a on a Kickstarter project to, to buy a dozen tickets sight unseen with that film with that cast. I'm in. I, and I wish and, you gave me more choices because I would have loaded that list. Up. I I know I know. Like <laughs> if I gave you twenty, because you know if you you know you know the industry, you know the people, and and you're you're gonna make you're gonna pick great people. I mean, those are all great people. I don't know the name of that young lady that you mentioned there. I'm gonna go look her up. Because if, if you're including her in a film with those four, whew, she must be something special. Yeah. Now you mentioned I'm, I'm, I got one more, and we're gonna we're gonna start to to wrap up and 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 tie some of these knots together. You've mentioned you know before we went live talking about Marvel and what's going on in Atlanta, um, and I, I I get the feeling you're a fan of those films. Of course. Okay. Are you are you in general a comic book fan too? I'm not necessarily a big comic book fan. I mean, okay. I, I'm, I, I, I mean, who didn't read comics as a kid? But it was more sure. so the movies attracted me and, and things okay. like that. I've actually started. Uh, me and my girl, we have been the past week been watching the whole entire Marvel franchise from from the first one. So that we're in a mission right now nice. to get to the end, to End Game, and some, and, some um, great, Widow. some great stuff, some great stuff. I, I think, I think years from now we're going to look at guardians of the galaxy as the breakouts of those films. Mm-hmm. Those to, to me, the guardians of the galaxy and two were just so different in such a wonderful way. But yeah. my question yeah, to you, dangerous. let's, let's imagine there's this massive reboot so we can, we can wipe the table and, you know, again, your career's hit, you get, you know, you're, 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 Tom Cruise level, you could you could pick what you do. What mm-hmm. character out of the Marvel universe would you love to play? I always dreamed of of a Blade prequel, mm. like in younger, earlier days. Okay, that would be amazing. I think. I mean, I just to see because it was a snippet. It was actually a deleted scene I seen in Blade, where oh. Whistler actually met Blade. It's you can find it on YouTube somewhere. And I, I always wanted to, like, because I still kind of have a young look, but I don't look old enough to play, like, you know, the the, 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 the sensei or something like that, maybe. I'm still kind of like, oh, <laughs> he's learning. I've got to teach him. He's, he's got to be, he's a be, he's a becoming of age type of man. So I think that would be cool. That would um, be great. I, I mean, who that. wouldn't, I mean, who, what black guy would not say Black Panther? Like, come on, like, that's... <laughs> You know, but those, respect, those are big shoes to fill. Those are huge shoes. I wouldn't even want to do that. Honestly, it's like Chadwick Boseman has really cemented that for anybody who comes in after that. They really have some big shoes to yeah. fill. I mean, it'd be great to see another one, but I don't know if the world is quite ready. But um, what else? What other character? Um, somebody. No, no, I don't think that. Oh, who was, his, what was that kid's name, man? I forgot his name. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't Nightwing. I think Nightwing is less Latino. Um, I forgot. I forgot his name. But I might have to come back to you on that. That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. You can shoot like over. We'll, we'll drop. We'll drop it in the show notes. Yeah. So let's. Like a- you know, your journey here. You know, we can look at it in a, in a number of different ways. But even though your your martial arts path is not a conventional one, it is still a martial arts path. And what I'm finding fascinating is it has all of the same hallmarks. You've got the plateau leading to the breakdown, leading to the resurgence and the powering through. Mm -hmm. You've got the false start. Mm -hmm. You've got the seeking for the right place to be. You've got the stepping away for a while and then back in and kind of shaking it out in the way you said it. Hey, I still have it. Yeah. You know, which a lot of us have experienced. Yeah. So when we, when we look at your journey like that, the first off, I don't, I don't you know, I, I don't want anybody to ever say, you know, this is not a martial arts journey. This is as martial arts a journey as, as one has ever had. But what I, what I wonder is what's next. You know, not the film part, mm-hmm. not so much the acting part, but and, and not even the physical part. Mm-hmm. Because when I hear about a journey like this, 
And as martial arts as it is, you know, you clearly developed some tools, you know, probably some within your disciplines. I'm going to call them collectively call them disciplines, dance, gymnastics, martial arts, as well as outside. But how do you take those pieces that you have that have clearly given you a lot? And how do you build on them? Mm, that's a really good question. You know, I just want to my 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 dream for right now as a martial artist is just to continue to to grow, to learn new moves, bigger moves, and to also be able to sustain my ability to to move. You know, as I as I as I come into age, you know, I would if I can be still. 60, 75, still performing a nice clean roundhouse kick or, or side kick, you know, with, the, with that nice 45 degree angle with my heel, <laughs> you know, that would be, for me, that would be like, that would be good. That would satisfy me as a martial artist. Just mainly just being able to still maintain uh, the skill. Yeah. You know, the common thread through, through all the things you do are, are physical expression. You are an artist. Yes. And, you know, I, I hope you're able to find balance of, you know, putting your soul into stuff without, you know, to, to throw it back to earlier, burning out. Yeah. Burning you know, out. that would, that would break my heart. I don't want to, I don't want to read anything about that. You know, you've got, <laughs> you've got, you've got some more, uh, got some more films in you in, in a yes, bunch sir. of ways, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Uh, where could people go to, to check out that movie? Well, we got uh, Street Dreams Los Angeles is currently streaming on um, Amazon. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's Prime, but I know it's on Amazon. It's also on Tubi. It's also on Fandango now. It just got picked up. Um, the distribution company just did a deal with another uh, web and networks. So we will be launching. We will be announcing that, what other platforms it will be streaming on. Um, if you want to find out more about that, you know, you can always follow my Instagram pages, which is uh, Mr. Jordan Khan. I have also have, when you're up there, have a gang of tutorials of special kicks, basic kicks that nice. uh, you can learn. You can also follow my website at uh, jordancon.com. I will also update on new films, movies that I, I have coming out. But if that all else fails, you know, you can get on your Apple TV or Fire Stick and type in my name, Jordan Con C-A-N-N, and it'll show up all the movies that I'm either in or are, are working on. Probably nice. more so I'm, I'm in. It's not going to show what I'm working on unless you go to my hand. <laughs> But um, and it'll show you where 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 you can find the films at. So we we're steadily building, and on YouTube cool. we got a bunch of stuff. Of course, we got a bunch of stuff up there as well. That's awesome. I, I I just fired it up. Excuse me. Yeah, I see Tubi, I see Vudu, and I see Amazon Prime. Oh, it is on Vudu. I forgot about that. Yeah. So give people some choices. Nice, nice. And is there a timetable for the sequel? The sequel we we we're, we're scheduled to go into pre production more so at the top of the year. Okay. Um, I'm I'm hoping we can start by summer. I'm ready to go. I'm sure the script is going to need a couple of rewrites and things like that. But it's pretty much a green green light, you know. Nice. Also, nice. But it'll be it'll be a couple years. It will, it will. Honestly, maybe I would say maybe the most maybe two. Okay. The most because right. the EP he's like he's fired up. He's ready to go. Nice. So he's ready to go. And also while I'm here, I'm also gonna I also have a science fiction um, pilot that I'm we're releasing. It's called The Elementals. Oh, cool. Imagine, um, let's see, Dragon Ball Z meets Avatar meets uh, uh, Hunger Games. Think of something like that. It's like a new revolution of, 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 of beings who, are, who have the powers of each of the elements of the earth. Uh, I wrote this and I produced this with uh, my, my, um, my guy named Eric, Eric Michael Fetterman, upcoming actor and producer. And we've been working on this now. We just finished all the video the effects. It's it's gonna look amazing. You guys are gonna really nice. probably one, gonna be one of my most proudest uh, uh, short films that I've done so far. And we're we're looking to build this into an uh, actual maybe thirteen episode series. So we're gonna release the pilot. See what everyone how everyone reacts to that. I'm also gonna send you a copy. That's yeah, cool. yeah. I'm I, I want you you had at your at your your fusion there. I you had me. You had me. <laughs> it sounds awesome. Yeah, I want to, I want to watch this. Definitely be on the lookout for that. So that, um, hopefully we're I'm not gonna say hopefully we're gonna release that by the end of the year, end of the year. We kind of had a slowdown with with the pandemic sure. and things like that, but we're 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 there. We're in the, we're in the, like the last two phases of it, uh, and then we're gonna actually release the trailer, and then we're gonna actually release the entire film to get get that feedback. Great. 
Awesome. Jordan, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Final words to the, the folks listening. You know, you got different people, different disciplines, different lengths of time training, different professions all over the world. So sure. what do you want to say to them? How do you want to close up? Um, you know, stay consistent with what you do. Know at the end of the day, nobody has you except you. You know, um, you're going to meet people who are going to make you some promises and say some things like, oh, I can help you with this, help you with that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to you. You, you are your business. You are your brand. You are what's going to make everything around you uh, work, so to speak. Yes, it is a team effort. But at the end of the day, you are your best friend. So love yourself. Take care of yourself. Be patient with yourself. Accept yourself. And just continue to build on that. I had a great time. I'm looking forward to checking out the movie, the other movie, the other stuff he's got going on. Man, this, this is this is somebody I can see a lot of myself in, right? Like doing a whole bunch of really cool different stuff and threading through a lot of it is martial arts. So Jordan, thanks for coming on the show. I'm sure we'll talk again. And audience, I want you to know that Jordan and I just spent close to 30 minutes after the show just just chatting, just chatting about life, about music. You know, what a great guy. I really hope you go check out the stuff he's got going on. He's going places. I've got a good feeling on this one. If you want to go deeper on the show, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Check out the show notes. It's episode 646. Check out the links and the videos and the photos and the transcripts and all those other things. Sign up for the newsletter. And once you're done with that, head on over to whistlekickprograms.com. Don't forget, we've got a number. We right now have four different training programs starting it free that you can check out to make you a better martial artist. Strength, speed, endurance, flexibility. Yup, flexibility one's free. So check that out. And then if you want to go even deeper, follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick. And don't forget the Patreon. That's another way that we give back, but also you give back to us. For, you know, a few bucks a month and up, you can get some exclusive or behind the scenes, discounted, all kinds of really cool stuff coming in over there. Stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. And, uh, well, retention on that's pretty good. So we're doing something right. My email, jeremy at whistlekick.com. We're always looking for feedback, guest suggestions, things like that. And I'm out. That's it. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. <laughs>